Welcome all, you have found Magpie Stories, I hope you have a pleasant time listening. Once upon a time. A dark fairy tale by Magpie Stories. Sophia was distant from her maternal grandmother by over sixty years and a thousand miles. She loved coming to the old woman's house. The smell of dill and earthy vegetables made each annual trip something exotic and strange. Nothing like the way mummy and daddy lived. It reminded her innocent mind of one of those picture books at nursery, the one with the old woman and the house made of gingerbread. Her grandma smiled, the glasses perching perfectly at the end of her nose. She stirred a pot of something and rested the spoon on the edge of it. The batter for the cot puli pankukas was ready. She placed it in the fridge. Sophia looked at the used carrier bags next to the sink. They contained things that she did not normally get at home. She and Grandma had walked into the forest, a sea of green moss and speckles of light. They picked the yellow mushrooms, so delicate and fine. When she would find some, Grandma would come with her small, wickedly sharp knife and put them in a basket, an actual wicker basket. They had also picked strawberries. These were not the ones in plastic like at the shops back in England, but small and sweet and white in places, delicate and delicious. Sophia loved coming to Latvia. The town, Azerniki, was full of beautiful guest houses and fruit orchards, a land of trees and forests, lakes and rivers, Last visit it had been a land of white and snow, the likes of which she never saw back home. Sophia had been learning her Latvian extra hard so Grandma could tell her more stories. Shuffling one foot in front of the other, she asked Grandma for a tale. Grandma glanced out of the window. Sophia had never noticed, but Grandma only told stories when it was daytime never in the dark of the evening when she went to bed. Her grandmother stole a look at the painting of the pretty lady in blue, who lived in a frame above the old fridge, the cross above the door, her little shrine, and finally settled her eyes on Sophia. Of course, little one, what shall it be? Rurik, that's my favourite, she pipped up. If you're sure, we can read one from the book almost in a voice trying to dissuade Sophia. She always called her in the Latvian way. No, Rurik. Then remembering her manners, please. Very well, but you must listen and not interrupt. She looked at her audience. Sophia had nestled herself onto the floor, her legs crossed on top of the old goatskin, the warmest part of the kitchen. She herself nodded and nestled herself into a chair by the oven, her stick resting in one gnarled hand. She told the old story, the one her own grandmother had whispered to her, a warning about strangers and water and drowning. The names of the creatures and the stories gave them power. But her granddaughter was removed from the old ways and these creatures were safely trapped inside their tails. Once upon a time, she began, there was a creature. This creature thought he had lived a long and happy life. He smiled, oh, ever such a lot. He had white teeth, and he was very tall. His name was Rurik, and he stayed in the dark corners of the forests, looking after the lost children. He always liked to help the lost children. He travelled the wooded ways, day in and out, trying to make the world a better place for all the lost little girls and boys. They stopped growing old, 
feeling fear and pain. Yes, Rurik knew how to help the lost children. Many would call him evil, but this was his nature and he did not know any different. Sometimes he would lead hungry children into the forest to a spot where the blackberries grew. They would no longer be hungry, they would also no longer remember the way home. By this time, Rurik would have gone on to help other children. One day Rurik had been travelling through the wilds of a great forest called Rumbala. Sophia fidgeted excitedly. She had been there. He had grown tired and hungry. As he slept, he had dreams, terrible dreams. He dreamt of a future of fire and iron and suffering, of, to him, evil men dressed in white who worshipped a strange symbol, a symbol that burned his eyes to look at, a symbol that had scared him away from many places. Rorik was awoken by the fearsome growl of one of his many stomachs. On the breeze he could smell something frying. His stomachs rumbled again. He walked in the shade of the forest till he felt the ground change to cobbles, the city with horse hooves and the sound of people greeting friends and buying food. Rurik knew that people would be scared of him. Despite being a happy creature, he knew he was ugly. As he stood there, not knowing what to do, he saw a small boy alone by the edge of the marketplace. Sophia's grandma was watching her granddaughter listen to the old story, a small smile of excitement twitching at the corner of her lips. She was so enthralled in the story and her grandmother in the telling, they had not noticed the shadows had lengthened into twilight. The small boy noticed Rurik, and as small boys do, he decided to explore that which he should not. He confidently walked to the creature, the creature who was by now very hungry. Who are you and what are you doing in this village? The boy demanded. I am a simple creature, he replied. I am called Rorik, and I would dearly like to have something to eat. Her granddaughter giggled. She always enjoyed it when grandma did the voices. The boy looked at him and at once felt sorry for him. I am sorry, I have no food. My family, what is left of it is poor. My father dead and my mother gone. Rurik looked sadly down at his feet, nails sharp as the end of chisels. I know a pool where fish live. We could catch some. Rurik felt sorry for this boy. He must take care of him, like he took care of the others. The boy smiled and took his hand, for this was a time before little boys and girls were told not to go with strangers and everyone in all the villages left their doors unlocked. The boy smiled and took his hand. They walked to the stream in the forest at the edge of the village. The shadows were lengthening and the boy was beginning to worry. I should go home, he declared. But I am hungry, replied Rorik. Perhaps you could take my hand and help me down to the water. The water looked cold and dark and deep. The boy could perfectly see his and Rorik's reflection in it. He had not noticed how sharp and long Rorik's teeth were before. Grandma, is this the boy he drowns? He drowns to use as bait for fish? Sophia asked expectantly. Her grandmother sighed and the spell broken. <sighs> You know the story, yes, the boy is drowned and eaten. If you know the tale of the Vedachas so well, tell it to yourself. She hated being interrupted. Immediately she knew she had said too much. She glanced outside at the darkness and knew, for the first time in sixty years, the feelings of fear. Her father had warned her, her long dead and clever father, a man who knew about such things, who unlike most men, listened to the wisdom of their grandmothers. Grandma, what does... Sophia stumbled over the word. For that touches mean. Her grandmother breathed harder, heart beating, beating too fast, her vision blurring, the fear causing her body to stitch the fine threads of panic throughout her chest. She thanked God that there was at least the cross above the door. 
Would that be enough? Sophia wondered why her grandma did not respond to her name or the gentle shaking of her arm. She had never seen a stroke before. A cold wind had started to blow in. A figure slumbering in the woods, dreaming of men in white and fire and men who worship strange symbols had been woken by one of its many stomachs growling. Sophia had begun to cry. The creature, with its long teeth and sharp nails, cocked its head on one side and grinned. It headed towards the noise, skirting a wide, deep lake as it progressed from the forest. It felt the ground change from woodland path to solid road. Thank you for listening. I hope it was enjoyable. More info on stories can be found in the links below. You'll hear from me again soon.